Coincidental with the recent Mac 2024 exhibition which they organized, the MTA, the Manufacturing Technologies Association, produced a report called The True Impact of UK Manufacturing. Here with me to discuss the findings and implications of that report is Professor David Bailey of the Birmingham Business School. David, let's start by saying that the report is a distinct rebuff to anyone who questions the importance of manufacturing in the UK today. Very much so. And I think, you know, as economists, we're at fault, really, by measuring manufacturing in, in a traditional way, which suggests it only accounts for, say, 8 or 9% of the economy, depending on whether you're looking at employment or output. What's interesting here is when you add in spending in the supply chain. So we start to look at those very long tentacles of manufacturing that go through the economy. It goes up to something like 15%. And then when on top of that, you look at the spending of that further, the knock-on effect, the multiplier effect, it gets almost to 24%, 25% of the economy. That's about a quarter of the economy. So it's much more important than many people actually realise and in particular, much more important, I think, than government actually realises. I, I realise the economists hate the idea of double counting, and there's a, there's a danger of doing that. But the way I look at it is if the manufacturing just disappeared tomorrow, there would be that 24% hole in our national economy. That's the only way to look at it, because all that induced spending, indirect spending, would have gone. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. I think what it's trying to do is look at the broader impact of manufacturing. I mean, We've been saying this for a long time, but now we've got this extremely good report. The methodology is very robust, and it shows the overall impact of manufacturing to the UK economy. And I think that's really important because I think there's been a kind of assumption within parts of government, particularly in Treasury, I think, that this kind of doesn't really matter, that, oh, it's only 8%, and anyway, it's probably going to disappear, and we don't really need to worry about it. That's fundamentally incorrect. And if you think about the neglect that we've had of manufacturing in the UK, not just the neglect, actually, if we think about some of the very damaging policies we've had over the last few decades, whether it's overvaluation of sterling under monetarism, the impact of the global financial crisis, Brexit, high energy costs. And yet here it is still accounting for almost a quarter of the economy. Imagine what it would be like if we actually supported it and nurtured it. Yeah, the point you just made, I mean, the fact that it's been regarded as something of a Cinderella figure for all these years. Um, it, if anybody's asking the question, why are we in the state we're in, productivity low, uh, feeling increasingly the sick person of Europe, it kind of explains it, doesn't it? It's certainly a big contributing factor. I mean, if we think about the big challenges that we've had, it's been in terms of low productivity growth, particularly since the global financial crisis, lack of investment, lack of tr uh, investment in training and skills. Those are all areas in which manufacturing in the UK actually does very well. So higher productivity figures, rapid growth in productivity, big contribution to research and development, big contribution to investment and also exports. So actually, if we had a bigger manufacturing sector in the UK, UK PLC overall would be doing much better. We have neglected it at our peril, and we're seeing the consequences of that. And there is another consequence as well, which is that uh, manufacturing companies, in fact, companies generally in the UK are, are undervalued. They're undervalued on the stock exchange. Uh, they're cheap as chips if foreign raiders want to come in and pick up the juicier parts. That is something we need to look at because actually we're wide open, we're weak to be fair, uh, at a national level. And unless we actually do strengthen our manufacturing uh, sector by taking more care of it and paying more attention to it, then we're in danger even more as uh, current state we're in of some of our best companies being bought up. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. There are a number of different issues there. One is the, the lack of close linkages between the banking sector with some exceptions, and manufacturing, which means manufacturing is very reliant on the stock market for its funding. The fact the stock market under-recognises the contribution, I think, of manufacturing, and therefore the valuations are too low. But we also have this very open approach towards foreign takeover, which, by the way, we don't see in other countries, whether it's in the US, uh, in terms of their protection of manufacturing, in terms of what they define as high uh, national security, or in France, when they see uh, strategic sectors, or in other countries. So, 
you put that together and we have a, U- a UK manufacturing base that is, as you say, wide open to foreign takeover. Now, some foreign takeovers are very, very beneficial. Think about Tata with Jaguar Land Rovers. Others, much less so. Think about Kraft with Cadbury. So we need, I think, more scope for government to be able to vet takeovers generally, maybe put back in some kind of public interest test so that we can look at some of the really important ones, but also give shareholders more scope to defend themselves from a hostile takeover, management in particular more scope. That might mean raising the bar in terms of what level of shares you need to get to, and also perhaps actually having to own shares for a longer time period before you can vote in a takeover competition. So that all goes back, for example, to that key Cadbury takeover where we wanted to see reforms afterwards and they didn't really take place. We're in an election year and um, policymakers and the Labour Party widely tipped to form the next government are giving off very strong signals that spending power and possibly even revenue raising should be devolved to the regions. Now, does data... Uh, like the report that the MTA have produced, reinforce this thinking? And if so, how? So what the MTA report really shows is that the real importance of manufacturing in terms of accounting for almost a quarter of the economy, that is much higher, actually, in some other regions. So if we are serious about levelling up, we have to take manufacturing very seriously because it is very important in the north of England and the Midlands and Wales, for example. So you know, if if we're serious about levelling up, manufacturing is part of the solution. That means devolving, I think, more in terms of industrial policy and skills down to a regional level. We had something like that under the regional development agencies. We could perhaps think about combined authorities today. It also means some sort of support for manufacturing, reinventing something like a manufacturing advisory service and having an industrial policy. Now, remember, we don't really have an industrial policy, unlike the US with the Inflation Reduction Act, with Europe in terms of the Green New Deal, and China. And, you know, we've got to put back in place some sort of industrial policy. We had one. It began under Mandelson and the Labour, carried on under Vince Cable, and Greg Clark and the Conservatives really produced a quite impressive industrial policy, which was trashed under Boris Johnson. We need to get back to something like that and think about how we can decentralise industrial policy so that regions can actually do it in their own interests. And just final point on that, um, manufacturing, as given the 24% figure, demonstrates that it has the power to drive improvements in our society, not just our economy. There's a, there's a social value to this, as you say, the, the, the levelling up, given half a chance. And it would be even more powerful still if we got better at commercialising some of the brilliant innovation that goes on in our academic centres and the catapults and so on. Yeah, it's a great point. And the catapults are doing a really good job. I think we can scale that up much further. That's been one of the successes of industrial policy most recently. But on their own, they're not enough. We We need to be doing much more in terms of taking the successes that are very much at the interface between universities and manufacturing and scaling that up so we can start to create manufacturing and technology firms that can then start to compete on a global scale. I think as well what the the report suggests is that we've got this terrific base in manufacturing that we shouldn't undervalue. We know we've got big challenges and opportunities coming up in terms of industry 4.0, but also net zero. And whilst on the one hand, Labour are being positive about talking about the possibility for decentralising, they've also rode back on their green policies and that 28 billion that they've committed. So actually, I think we should think again about how far and how quickly we want to go. I think there is great scope for industrial policy to support manufacturing, help in terms of levelling up, but also uh, really follow through on that net zero agenda. David Bailey from Birmingham Business School, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.